so dear brothers uh, and sisters uh, uh, we have uh, studied uh, a subject of type and antitype uh, last week so today it will be a little bit further uh, about the type and antitype you see so last week we saw that uh, all the old testament things uh, that are written it is written for our encouragement uh, and for our uh, you see patience and hope so all the things uh, are uh, just a image of the real things to come so that is what that meaning of a uh, type and anti type all the things are mentioned in old testament are a uh, type which uh, uh, anti typically uh, signifies uh, you see christ uh, that's what we read in colossians uh, 2 16 and 17 we studied last week uh, that uh, you see in the uh, bible uh, the old testament characters uh, signifies always uh, the christ and the church uh, the new testament so similarly we saw an example about uh, abraham sacrificing his only son uh, isaac that uh, represents god uh, sacrificing his only loving son jesus christ so we saw that uh, everything related to abraham has got a typical meaning isaac uh, and rebecca eliezer everything if everything has got some meaning then surely the wife of abraham should also have some meaning so if you see in the bible how many wives did you see uh, abraham have uh, who can tell how many wives did uh, abraham have nobody knows sir how uh, many wives there are, uh, there are lots but uh, in mention hagar and sara very good hagar and uh, sara okay there is one more wife uh, called as ketura also okay so the three wives that are mentioned in the bible so let us read a few little for a bit of the background of abraham to understand the meaning of the three wives see abraham was a wealthy person he had uh, so many riches uh, and he had a beautiful wife whom he loved very much and her name was sara even at the old age they did not have any child even after so many years of relationship they did not have a child at all so as the days went on sara you see was getting old and old so sara thought instead of waiting for many more years let my husband uh, marry one of my servants and that is the time that uh, sara compelled abraham to marry a servant a egyptian servant whose name was hagar you know immediately as uh, abraham married uh, hagar ishmael was born you see a child was born but uh, unfortunately that was not uh, the heir of uh, god's promises even after ishmael was born the angels came to visit abraham the three angels they came and told that uh, abraham in the in thy seed in sara you see a seed shall come and i will bless her womb and she shall conceive a child uh, by this time next year therefore you see uh, even after uh, marrying uh, hagar god kept on reminding his promises uh, you see and sometimes uh, you see uh, sara laughed uh, abraham laughed uh, they are laughed with joy you see but uh, say as god promised uh, you see isaac was born we know all this story that's the reason i'm just uh, telling it in a summary way you can read the scriptures uh, is mentioned in genesis uh, you see uh, 14 chapter to genesis 24 chapter as uh, isaac was born you see isaac was nurtured very well by you see sara and abram because he was a very old age son a very petted son very loving son you see and uh, as uh, isaac began to grow you see ishmael began to mock isaac in front of everybody 
and this was very very displeasing to sara that uh, isaac is being teased by the servant's uh, son and uh, sara could never digest that one so immediately sara compelled abraham to cast away to see agar and ishmael but uh, initially abraham was uh, not uh, agreeing for this one but later on you see abraham agreed and you see and you sent uh, you see uh, agar <coughs> and uh, ishmael into the wilderness into the desert but as uh, they were uh, suffering in the desert uh, abraham did not give any property nothing but a few loaves of bread and a little bit of water to drink but as they sojourned in the desert land where there was no support or nothing whatever bread they had they ate uh, and ultimately the water also got exhausted it was as the verge of uh, the death of uh, ishmael underline this thing said everyone it was almost at the very you see end uh, that uh, ishmael fainted her mother protected him very much you see and uh, when uh, ishmael fainted uh, you see that is the time that sara pleaded to god god i have mercy on me please help my son and that is the time that god showed a fountain to hagar you see though she was a bond woman god did not forsake her god showed her a well you see uh, in the desert uh, and uh, she drew water and gave it to ishmael and thus uh, ishmael revived and lived and god blessed ishmael as a uh, uh, twelve tribes also but uh, as this parallel things were happening for uh, ishmael there isaac uh, began to grow and the marriage of isaac uh, took place uh, with rebecca we all saw all these things last week how elisa went to house of laban to you see bring uh, rebecca uh, to isaac and how both got married na uh, we all know and we all studied that how elias identified rebecca in the way she was giving a water to all the camels and elias and as she journeyed on the 10 camels she saw isaac immediately she you see uh, lighted uh, down from the camel to marry isaac you see but uh, there is a special thing in the bible that after the marriage of isaac you know abraham married once more you know this might be very strange to everybody how is it possible brother because he was very old age sara was dead but after the death of sara how could abraham marry again yes the bible says that abraham married and got six sons let us read genesis 25 1 to 2 brother genesis 25 1 to 2 please read brother anybody then again abraham took a wife and her name was keturah mm-hmm. and she bare him zimran and jokshan and medan and midan midian and ishpak and shua aha uh-huh. see six sons he married keturah and uh, unto him were born zimram huh eh? ishpak shua so total six sons were born to you see abraham it seems sir you know, this is a very strange thing because isaac was uh, born at the age of 100 that was almost at the, you see when uh, his body was dead it had lost lost that uh, uh, you see reproduction capacity but uh, even after that one he married ketura and uh, for him six sons it seems sir uh, midan midian ha uh, you see ishpakshwa ha uh, so many sons uh, now this is a very strange thing but what lesson do we have in this fan this is a beautiful type and anti type dear brethren all the things it done in the old testament are got a purpose now what does it represent sir we all know that abraham represents sir you see god and uh, isaac represents jesus then surely the three wives of uh, abraham also should represent something now what does it represent 
Is there any clue in the Bible? Yes. Apostle Paul, you see, tells this one in uh, Galatians 24 chapter 22 to 24. Galatians 4 chapter 22 to 24. Joel brother, can you read? And for it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bone maid, the other by a free woman. Ah, see, but Abraham had two sons. Here detail is given. Huh? Abraham had how many sons? Two sons. One by a bond huh? maid and other by a free woman. That means one was born through Hagar, other was born through Sarah. Next, continue with that. But he who was of the born woman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Ah, see, he that was born of the flesh, born through Hagar, was born naturally as everybody is born, you see. But he that was born through the free woman, Sarah, that was Isaac, how was he born? He was born only because of the promise or else there is no possibility that Isaac be born at all because Abraham's body was dead. Therefore, you see, huh? one was born through a free woman, one was born through a bond woman. Next brother, continue. Huh? Which things are all jury for these are the two covenants, ah, one see? from the Mount Sinai, which generated to bondage, which is Agar. Good. So, which things are an allegory? Allegory means what? With things are a shadow. Which things are a type. For these are two covenants. So, here Apostle Paul beautifully gives us the clue saying that this represents the covenants. So the three wives of Abraham represents three different covenants. Now what is a covenant? You see, see, nowadays uh, there is a different name for covenant. You know what is it one? Agreement. But in olden days, that was called as a covenant. Now, why do we make uh, covenants? Why do we make agreement? You tell me. See, we, why don't we just make a promise? Why do we make agreement? Like for example, imagine if I am going to sell my vehicle to you, Will you just uh, take my vehicle and go like that only and pay the amount and go just uh, um, by believing on my words that uh, I'm going to give my vehicle to you? You see, without any documentation, will you take the vehicle and go for yourself? Will you go? No. No. Why? Because lack of trust. You see, lack of trust on either party. We might che cheat you. You see? That is the reason huh? nobody believes the promise. You see, so many people have made so many promises all are broken. That is the reason people make covenants, agreements. So similarly, God made an agreement. Uh -huh. You know, which is the first agreement which God made? It was with Adam. Read OCR 6-7. Anil or Sunita's sister, can you read? Osiya 6 7. Anil or Sunita's sister, you're there? Osiya, Old Testament, after Book but, of But they like men have transgressed the covenant they have they dealt uh, treacherously against me very good uh, you see they have violated my covenant they have broken my covenant like men in other translation it says they have broken my covenant like Adam dear brethren so they have broken the covenant uh, like Adam Adam was the one you see God made the covenant with him Saying, uh, you are the king of this earth, I will give you everything, uh, but you need to be obedient to me. That was the agreement. Uh, that was the promise which God had made with uh, 
Adam. Okay. And the second covenant, we all know very well, it was with Noah. When Noah came out of the ark, God made a covenant with Noah, saying, from henceforth, I will never destroy, you see, the whole world with a flood. Let us read uh, Genesis 9 chapter, uh, verse 12. Genesis 9, 12. Genesis 9 12. Joel, brother, can you read? Only 12? Ah, you can read 13. Uh, 13 or 12, anyone. Okay. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generation. I do set my heart bow in the cloud it shall be for a token of covenant between me and the earth ah see that is the covenant and for a token of that covenant uh, god set a rainbow so whenever we see the rainbow we should remind us of the covenant with god made with Noah. that is not going to destroy the entire world with a flood so this is the uh, you see the second covenant the third covenant is the covenant which god made with abraham you see, when Abraham was ready to sacrifice Isaac, that is the time that God made a very, very important covenant uh, with him. Let us read Genesis 22, 16 to 18. Genesis 16, 22, 16 to 18. Uh, Romy's sister, can you read? Oh, Sister Romy, are there? Yes, I am here. Oh. And I said by myself, I have sworn, saith the Lord, for be because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as I as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the sea shore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies and in thy seed shall, uh, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice uh, this is the third covenant which God made with, uh, you see, Abraham. Therefore, you see, the covenant which God made with Abraham has um, got some many important things. See, God, first of all, made a covenant with whom? Abraham. Therefore, the name for this covenant can be given as Abrahamic covenant because it was made with uh, Abraham. And was there any condition for this covenant? For this agreement, was there any condition? There was no condition. You see, Abraham offered his son as a sacrifice, proved his faithfulness. Hence, God made this covenant. He never said, if all the world are obedient, then I will bless them. No, no, no. What did God say? He did not add any condition. Because you have done this one. I will definitely bless everybody of this world. I will bless all the people. You see, there is no condition that you should believe in Jesus, you should not believe in Jesus, you should read the Bible. No, nothing, no condition. You should accept Jesus as a Savior. No, nothing, nothing is mentioned. It is an unconditional covenant. Whenever we make agreement, we tell, no, we will pay one month rent. But what you should do? You should give us this house uh, for uh, rent, uh, this property will be with us. Uh, we will be staying in the house. So many conditions are there in the agreement. No? But this agreement, it was totally blank. No condition. Therefore, this covenant is called as an unconditional covenant also. And, you see, God made a promise. He took a oath upon himself. He swore upon himself. Therefore, the third name for this covenant is the oath bond covenant. He sealed it with a oath. Not only made a promise, not only made agreement, he sealed it with a promise also. And the fourth grave, this one, 
it is grace. Imagine, was there any rule that God should redeem each and every mankind? No. When Adam sinned, everybody were condemned to death. But was there any rule to save any mankind from death? No. There was no rule at all in God's, uh, you see, law. But yet God uh, decided to save mankind. That is his grace. That is his love. You see, dear brother, therefore it is called as grace covenant. So I'll tell you a clear explanation of grace. Imagine uh, we are all going for a job. You see, at the month end, we all get a salary. Imagine we'll get a 10,000 rupees salary month end. While giving the salary, if our boss comes and uh, gives us, take this uh, uh, 10,000 as a gift. Uh, uh, what will you tell? While giving you salary, if somebody tells that this is a gift, uh, what will you tell? We will tell, sir, this is not a gift. Uh, this is my right. Uh, this is my wages. I have labored for it. Uh, you see, I have struggled for it. I have worked for it. Uh, hence, uh, this is uh, not a what? Uh, not a grace. This is nothing. Uh, Fear you are doing to me. I have done the work. You have paid me. That's all. Now you boss will think hey, this fellow has uh, really upset. So next month while paying the salary, if he pays ten thousand plus two thousand extra, eh, that is what? Uh, that is gift. If it tells, take this 10,000 and 2,000 is a gift, uh, that is grace. So similarly, the whole mankind uh, are uh, taking the wages of sin, death. Anything extra was not promised. It was not a must. Uh, but God decided to pay something extra. That is grace. Eh? Therefore, the Bible says we are saved by grace. Now, you see, Promise and agreement. Now what is the difference between promise and agreement? Can anybody tell me? Difference between promise and agreement. What do you understand? You see, I make a promise. Example, I make a promise that, uh, you see, I will pay you uh, 5,000 rupee tomorrow. Uh, will I pay? Should I pay? Or uh, no need to pay? Which is the option? If I make a promise that tomorrow I will pay 5,000 rupees, huh? should I pay or can I postpone? How is it? Tell me. Anybody? I made a promise to you that I'm going to pay 5,000 rupees. Now, should I pay it or not? It's depend upon you. It depends upon us. Correct. And, yeah. Uh, I might pay also. I may not pay also. Okay? If it is possible from me, I will pay. But if it is not possible, I might skip also. But imagine if you make agreement that tomorrow 5,000 rupees has to be paid, then what does it mean? What, what does it mean? If I make agreement telling that uh, I need to pay Compulsorily, you need to pay 5,000 rupees in agreement, huh? like uh, paying a bank loan. What does it mean? Is it compulsory? Is it a must? Or, or else can we avoid it? We cannot avoid it. Cannot avoid it. That is the difference uh, between a covenant and a promise. God could have easily made a promise, uh, but uh, our mind no, doesn't believe the promise. We say, we tell, no, mother promise. Promise, mother, I will come. Huh? How many times we keep a promise? Huh? Promise can't be trusted, dear brethren. But if it is made as agreement, definitely it will believe. Therefore, you see, every house, every place, everything is rented out is what is an agreement, agreement. That is the covenant. Therefore, God made a covenant. Keep this one in mind. He never made a promise. That promise was sealed with a covenant. The promise was that I am going to bless everybody. But he sealed it 
with a oath upon himself. I am promising upon myself. That is the guarantee. I will definitely bless everybody. Now, okay. Now, this is the background about the covenant. Okay? About the agreement. Now, let us come into the picture. You see? Abraham had three wives. Eh? Sarah, Hagar, Ketura. Now, how all these three wives, which wife represents which covenant? Eh? Read Galatians 4.24, brother. Galatians 4.24. Munna sister, can you read Galatians 4.24? Which things are an allegory for these are the two, com uh, two covenant, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. Hmm. See, two covenants. And the first one is that Apostle Paul tells uh, it is uh, one, you see, from Mount Sinai with gender to bondage, which is Agar. Now you tell me, at Mount Sinai, what did God give to people of Israel? What did God give to people of Israel at Mount Sinai? Law. Very good. Law. The Ten Commandments. Uh, but did the people of Israel keep the commandments? No. No. They violated it. So, they became slaves to the law covenant. You see, they were under the law covenant. You see, they were under the law the law had power over them. So automatically what happened? They came under the bondage of the law covenant. That is what Apostle Paul is saying. As Agar was a bond woman, she was a servant. Similarly, you see, though it be the house of Abraham, though you be the house of God, though you know God, Israel people knew God, though they know God, they were still servants to the law. You see, that is what uh, Apostle Paul is saying here. Then, you see, uh, so uh, as soon as the law covenant was given, the people of Israel came under bondage. Uh, you see, Ibrahim? Uh, so, this represents uh, the law covenant. Continue. Verse 25, brother. It's given in verse 25, more clearly. Uh, For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. Ah, you see? Eh? Agar is uh, Mount Sinai. Where is it? Today, till even today, is there in Arabia? Arabian countries. Eh? That's what Apostle Paul is saying. And uh, that represents uh, Hagar and uh, Hagar. Uh, Along with Ishmael, as uh, they were a bond servant. Similarly, the law covenant and its children, the people of Israel, are under bondage to God, uh, to under this law. Okay. Now, uh, Ishmael represents the Jews. Hagar represents the law covenant. You see? Huh? Now, let us come to a broader picture. Huh? Other. Uh, Huh? Wife. You see? Who's other wife? Huh? Sarah. Read verse 22. Verse 22, brother. Who can read? Sajan, brother. Can you read? Sajan, brother, is possible? Sajan, Pariyar. Galatians 4.22. Okay. Anil, uh, brother, uh, Sunita Ashtra, can you read? Mm -hmm. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bond ma bondmate, the other by a free woman. Mm, other way, yeah. Free woman. Now who is a free woman? This was Sarah. Mm. Now read verse 26. 
what is that sara covenant let us read with verse 26 brother ha huh? hmm galatians 4 26 brother ha read brother galatians 4 26 brother hmm but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Ah, so who is this free woman? Here, Apostle Paul says, it is the Jerusalem which is above. You see, we read in the Bible, there are two Jerusalems, correct? Huh? One is heavenly Jerusalem, one is earthly Jerusalem. Correct or not? Have you read or not? In Revelation, it says, no, I saw a new heaven, a heavenly Jerusalem coming down from heaven. Huh? Read Revelation 21. Revelation 21 2. Revelation 21 2. Uh, Anu Magar sister, can you read? And I John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Mm. Mm. See, heavenly Jerusalem, you see, prepared as a bride of the husband. Now, who is the bridegroom? Jesus. You see, the bride means church. So, this heavenly Jerusalem, you see, represents the church. Therefore, in the Bible, you see, the church is called as the heavenly Jerusalem. You can read there only, it's given there. You see, uh, Galatians 4.28 Galatians 4.28 is given there. Uh, Joel brother, can you read? 4.28 Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Ah, See, therefore, uh, Isaac is compared to as we, the church. You see? So therefore, dear brethren, here, uh, if you see, huh, here there is other picture. Huh? What is that uh, other picture? Uh? Uh, now you will understand the story and compare it. Abraham married Sarah, but there was no child. Similarly, God originally made a covenant uh, by taking oath upon himself. Uh, but immediately did uh, that seed of the woman come. Immediately did the, you see, child was born for them, through whom the whole world will be blessed. Did Jesus come immediately? No. You see, it took a lot of time. You see, it took a lot of time, dear brethren. It did not happen immediately. Then what happened? As there was no child, Sarah compelled Abraham to marry Hagar. Hmm. As soon as Agar was born, what happened? Immediately, child was born. As soon as the law covenant was given, under him the whole nation of Israel came. So you read Galatians 3.19. Gopal brother, can you read Galatians 3.19? Wherefore, then uh, served the law it was added because of transgression, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Ah, see, law was mm -hmm. added to the covenant, to the promise. So, originally, promise was only important. Originally, Sarah was only important. But uh, this Hagar came in between. She was added. No, immediately, you see what happened. Yeah, Hagar. Son Ishmael began to persecute whom? Isaac. So similarly, what happened? Huh? Once Jesus came, the people of Israel began to persecute Jesus and the church. Read Galatians 4.29. Galatians 4.29, brother. Uh, who can read? Ashish, brother, can you read? Galatians 4.29, are you there? Okay. okay, I'll read. You're muted, uh, Shishwadar. 
Okay, please read the. Okay, somebody else can read. Okay. Uh, I got uh, it. I got it. Read, read. Matthew four twenty nine. Mm -hmm. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so, it is now. Hmm. You see, even so, it is now. Huh? In olden days, what happened? Huh? Eh? How Ishmael persecuted Isaac? Similarly, it is now during the days of Apostle Paul. The Jewish people began to persecute Jesus and the church. Huh? You see? Therefore, dear brethren, what happened there? Huh? What did uh, Sarah tell? We can't live together. Please divorce her. Similarly, who was divorced? Because the Jewish people killed Jesus on the cross. God put away the people of Israel. Read verse 30, brother. Galatians 4, 30, brother. Uh, okay, verse 30. Nevertheless, what said the scripture? Cast out the bone woman and her son, for the son of the bone woman shall not be higher with the son of the free woman. Continue. Verse 31. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bone woman, but of the free. See, but of the free woman. So both can't live together. God knew that the Jewish people, the Jewish nation and the church could never live together. God selected a few people as a church class that cast away Israel. Read Isaiah 51. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 1. Munna sister, can you read? Isaiah chapter 50 verse 1 in the Old Testament. Thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away, or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have he sold yourself, mm. and for your transgression is your mother put away. See, God is telling to Israel, where is your mother's divorce? Bring it down. I have put away her because of her iniquity. This is how Israel were cast out from God's favor. Hagar had a very tough time, severe time. No food, no water to drink. Almost the verge of death. She was supposed to die along with her uh, child. But last moment she prayed to the Lord. Let me try and see. Seek the grace of God. God was merciful. Similarly, today we are living in this stage of the world. The people of Israel are cast away from God. They don't have the favor of God. You see, God's grace is there, but favor is not yet come to Israel. You know what will happen in the future? Very, very tough time will come to Israel. It is given in Zechariah 14, chapter 1 and 2. Zechariah 14, chapter verse 1 and 2. Joel Buddha, can you read? Zechariah 14, 1 and 2. You can read verse 2. Zechariah, Old Testament, 14, 2. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rift, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go for into capacity, mm -hmm. and the residue of the people shall not cut off from the city. Imagine, this is the future. What will happen to him, sir? I will gather all nations against Jerusalem, dear brethren. This is the situation of the world. All the forces have been pushing for the nations to attack Jerusalem. This will definitely be fulfilled. Imagine what will happen at that time. You see, 
houses are ravished women are taken captivity half of the city is almost taken captivity imagine half of israel gone to captivity that means only half is left over it seems sir that is the way agar was left over half dead almost at the verge of death the same way israel will be at the death situation that is the time that they will cry to god lord have mercy and help me see same zechariah 12:10 Read with the Joel brother. Zechariah twelve ten. And I will pour upon the house house of David, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace of supplication, and they shall to look up upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him. as one uh, mourned for his only son and shall be bitterness for him as one that is bitterness for his firstborn ah uh, see what will happen now when the entire nations of this world will attack israel israel would have no chance to you see escape that is the time you see huh God shall pour the spirit uh, upon David. Uh, what spirit? Uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, spirit of grace to humbly seek for the Lord. Uh, that is the time they will realize Jesus as the Messiah. Even today, the Jewish people don't accept Jesus as Messiah. Similarly, uh, Hagar and uh, Ishmael never accepted Isaac as uh, the son of the heir. Uh, you see, they fought. Uh, but uh, later they realize their mistake similarly they will realize their mistake that is the time that god will save them how will god save them verse 9 brother same zekeria 12 9 brother ha huh? hmm. and it shall came to pass come to pass in that they that will speak to destroy all the nation that come against jerusalem see then god will destroy all the nation that come against jerusalem that is will be the time for the third world war okay now what happened uh, to hagara water was given water always represents in the bible the truth you see the living waters shall be given to whom ishmael and hagar they will also sustain they will also continue to live you see but as these events were taking place parallelly you see these things go parallelly in god's plan you see ishmael was cast off isaac was growing he had a tough time what was happening here the wedding was happening okay so here what is happening the selection of church is happening rebecca is been selected you see rebecca is called to marry isaac uh -huh. so once the marriage happens of uh, Rebecca and Isaac, you know what happens, sir? Ah, uh, Abraham marries the third time. That means once the church is complete, once the church is uh, glorified, once the church joins together with the Lord, immediately what will happen? Ah, uh, a third covenant will come. Third marriage happens. Huh? How many sons were born? Huh? How many sons were born? Huh? Six. Ah, uh, you see, how many sons means? Uh, six sons. Ah, uh, Zimran, Jokshan, ah, uh, Midan, Midian, Ishmael, Shua. Six sons. Uh, everybody seeing this one will laugh. Uh, how is it possible, brother? Ah, uh, when at the age of hundred years only he could not beget a child. Ah, uh, at the age of ah, uh, ah, hundred and thirty, hundred and forty, ah, uh, hundred and forty years, uh, how can he marry and beget uh, six children? That is true. it happened it was against all odd similarly this ketura wife also represents one more covenant which is very secretly kept in the bible you know dear brethren when christ returns the second coming he is going to establish a new long covenant with the entire world the whole world will come under this covenant that will happen in the thousand years 
that is the ketura covenant let us read about this one in jeremia 31st chapter beautifully it is given jeremia 31st chapter you see jeremia 31 uh, anumagar can you read jeremia 31st chapter verses 31 to 34 one by one verse one by one jeremia 31 1 30 31st chapter 31st verse to 34 we will go verse by verse at the same time said the lord will i be the god of all the families of israel and they shall be my people thus said the lord the people which were left of the shore found grace in the no 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 sister no. 31st chapter 31st verse take this but this he take this 31 to 34 31 31 got 31 Hmm. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Ah, sister, this is a new covenant, not the old covenant. See, old covenant is which one? The law covenant. But this will be a new law covenant. It will be the same law covenant, but it will be a new type. Now, what is the difference between the old and the new covenant? Continue. Verse 32. Hmm. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt with my covenant they break also, although I was an husband unto them, said the Lord. God was a husband to Israel, it seems. Uh -huh. Beautifully given, husband and wife, children, Abraham, Hagar, eh? Ishmael. See, beautifully given. Though I was a husband, uh, did not obey me, I divorced them. Eh? So, law covenant. Uh, what happened? Uh, God gave the law covenant after coming from Egypt. Uh, he gave it on the tablets, on the stone. But uh, did it make any use to them? They broke the covenant. Continue. Next. How will the new covenant be? Verse 33. Uh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And will be their God, and they shall be my people. Uh -huh. You see, how will uh, the God give the new law covenant? Uh? Will He give it upon stone, or where? Where will He write it? Let me see who is going to answer. Uh. Tell me, where God is going to write the new law covenant? Our heart. Ah, uh, upon the hearts of the people. That means. It is going to be written by heart. In school teacher tells no, by heart, by heart the tables, by heart the rhymes, by heart means what? Coming from the heart. In the thousand years, the law covenant will be written upon each and everybody's heart. It will be imprinted. The God's words, the Bible shall be imprinted upon each and everybody's hearts. It will be not like uh, printing on the stone tablets. No, 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 no. That one they broke. But once if it is written in the heart, uh, there is nobody required to teach them again. They can't break it. Continue. Next verse, sister. Verse 34. Uh. And they said, there is no more every man, man his neighbor and hmm. every man his brother. Hmm. They know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of greatest of them, said the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity 
and I will remember their sin no more. Uh -huh. How will uh, this law come in be? They shall teach no more his neighbor. Know the Lord. Uh, today we go witness, no? You understand the Lord, accept Jesus Christ as a savior. In the thousand years, no need to teach at all, it seems. Because from the least even to the greatest, everybody shall know. You see, you might be a prime minister, you might be a watchman. Everybody shall know the Lord. No required that one should go and teach uh, Bible at all. Even then. All the sins should be forgiven. Today all sins are forgiven. Uh. Where sins are forgiven? Sins are uh, arousing. Uh. Sin is growing. Uh. In thousand years, sins will be forgiven. Now imagine if you go and tell this one to the world and to the Christians, will they believe it? They will laugh. I, uh, who is going to come in the thousand years? Will they learn the truth in the thousand years? Will the people uh, all accept Jesus in thousand years? No, only they are not accepting. How will they accept Jesus as a savior in thousand years? It is a great wonder to them. It is a laughter. That is the meaning of Ketura. Thousand years, all the dead will come. Imagine, if you tell to the world, uh, will they believe it? No, no. Huh? You saw, no? That day we had a meeting in Nepal. Huh? They are arguing how the dead will come. Huh? Oh, he is spiritually dead, lead the, that type of dead. No, 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 only one type of dead only. You see, uh, in thousand years, this is the joy, dear brethren. You know what is the meaning of word ketura? See, always when you study the Bible, we need to keep these points. We need to take the meaning of the word, Hebrew and Greek meaning. Like, for example, I'll ask you a question. Uh, why did God tell Abraham and Sarah to keep his son name as Isaac. Who can tell me? Why did God tell to keep the son's name as Isaac? Who will tell me? Let me see. I'll give you a chocolate. Nobody knows. Huh? Why did they keep his son's name as Isaac? Because he is promised. Hmm? You are very near, sir. I will give you 50%. Isaac. Uh, wait, wait, Ashish, brother. Wait, wait. Let yeah. them answer, wait. Huh? Okay. Because they are old, so they cannot uh, bear a children. Uh. So that. Uh, you're correct. You're 90% correct. Balance of the chocolate will give it to you. Huh? Now let us read Genesis 21 verse 6. Genesis 21 verse 6. Somebody read. And Sarah said, God had made me to laugh so that all, all that here will laugh with me. See, God had made me to laugh with him. So imagine a 90-year grandma if she gives birth to a child, what will you tell? What will everybody tell? Will they not laugh at her? Huh? They will laugh. Oh, you see, <laughs> old man, she has gone. Huh? She has begotten a child at the age of 90 years. Oh, yo, everybody will laugh or not? That is what happened. Everybody started to laugh. That is the reason. You see, they named the child as Isaac. Isaac means laughter. You see? Therefore, oh, what is the, you see, uh, prop given for a child, you know? They, they call it as bundle of joy. You see, a child is actually a bundle of joy. So Isaac means laughter. You see, so similarly, Ketura means what? Incense. In the thousand years, each and every dead people are going to come back in the resurrection. What a pleasing and a pleasant smell it is for the people who are fed up with so much of sufferings, who are lost their loved ones, dear brethren. Imagine all the dead people come back from the grave. How joy it will be. Imagine if a person dies in the house, what weeping is it in? What mouthing, dear brethren? Whatever you give, you can't control them. Even if you give, you see, a mountain full of gold, they won't be satisfied. 
imagine but in that situation you are taking the dead body to the graveyard immediately if that uh, dead person rises to life what will happen that is the joy and the laughter they will run no money or no wealth in this world can recompense in that one that is what god is going to do in the thousand years he is going to resurrect each and every dead dear brethren that is the meaning of the six sons of ketura ha uh -huh. six sons means what six in the bible is a imperfect number seven in the bible is a perfect number which day was man created which day was man created ayyo which day was man created simple question which day six. was man huh Se seven seven times you are studying Six. seven standard so you are telling seven hmm? which day is it sixth seventh fourth fifth which one seven seventh oh you seventh day eh which day which day Okay, I'll tell you one, uh, one small little bit story. You all go to school? Did you all go to school at least? Actually, it's uh, the seventh is the day when God created everything and He rested. Okay, okay. Now answer my question, sister. Now, did you all go to school or not? Yes. You all went. Okay. Did you ever copy in the school? Huh? copy 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 yes, yes. exam yes. exam paper co copy yeah sometimes brother sometimes uh, good that is good uh, good good child you are all very good child so <laughs> whenever ask a question if you don't know the answer please copy from the bible okay <laughs> now i'll show you how to copy <laughs> open the textbook genesis first chapter genesis first chapter 26 verse it is given the creation of man correct da hmm? read verse 27 uh. hmm. so god hmm. created man in his own image hmm. in the image of god created he him hmm. male created he them very good which is this day read verse 31 brother ah uh. and god saw everything that he had made and behold it was it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day ah now you tell me i'll ask the same question let me see who is going to answer which day was man created sixth day very good boldly you should tell You see, courageously, from firmly, you should tell it's the sixth day. So six always in the Bible is the number of a man and an imperfect number. You see, but seven means perfect. So six is the number of a man. No, six thousand years of mankind. That is the six sons of Abraham through Ketura. Okay, huh? So Zimran, Jokshan, Midan, Midian, Ishbak, Shua. Six children are there, no? Ah, so six thousand years. The entire mankind from Adam to Jesus' second coming is six thousand years generation. They will all be blessed. Da, this is the three covenants. This is what Abraham's three wives represent. Got it? Okay. I'll be sending the notes and uh, YouTube link. Please go through it. Any doubts? Any questions? You can ask.